We're gonna go into the key components behind upper body strength training for sprinters. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you wanna be more explosive, you wanna run faster, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a beast. So some of the key components behind sprinting is that we've gotta have good stability, we have to have good dynamic trunk control. But what ends up happening when we're talking about sprinting, about sprint-based training, is that a lot of coaches, a lot of sprint coaches, and even a lot of speed coaches might sit there and say like, hey, we don't want our guys to get too muscular. We don't want them to get too bulky up top. But then they end up running a little bit out of balance. They're not capable of handling a lot of load because their upper body is so pathetically weak. Now, with that being said, I'm not saying that we need to develop sprinters that are these huge, hulking individuals, what we need to do as strength coaches is develop sprinters that are strong, that are balanced, and that can utilize their trunk with their upper body and coordinate that with their legs. So we're gonna give you six key exercises that we utilize for upper body strength training for our sprinters. So the first exercise that we're gonna to utilize to improve upper body strength for sprinters is gonna be the alternating dumbbell bench. And so I'm gonna grab 35s here, and what I wanna see is you can, you can get a little creative with this. And, and a, lot of, a lot of strength coaches just try and stay really simple, really, um, you know, they don't ever really get flashy, and I think it's okay, especially when we're dealing with sprinters, to get a little flashy. And I even like to think about when I have my sprinters to actually push their lumbar spine into the bench, while retracting their upper back. And it's a little bit hard to do, but it can help with coordination. And so when I'm talking about the alternating perspective, we can either pause in the bottom and alternate here while we're squeezing our gut, okay? Or we can pause in the lockout, go here, back down, come up, back down, come up. And so when we come down, we have to start to really squeeze in our obliques squeeze in our trunk while we're holding and even to a point drive through the heels on the bench so that we can stabilize while still increasing our upper body strength and now because we're doing it from an alternating perspective it's a little bit harder to really really get hypertrophic but you can increase that upper body strength and what i like to superset this with is a Single leg banded row, okay? So we like to use our power elastics. You can click on the link down below, garagestrength.com and pick that up, but I wanna find an immovable object, okay? And we're gonna, all we're gonna do is take this, loop it through one of the handles, okay? Just like that. And if I am going to be rowing with my right arm, I'm gonna come forward here. I'm gonna come up, row, okay? So I'm focusing on what my lats are doing, what my abs are doing while I'm driving through that heel. You're gonna get a little bit of hamstring tension, a little bit of a hip lock here. You're gonna come back up, row, okay? And the whole point is that as we row, we don't wanna be twisting and rotating all over the place. We wanna be stable here with the band. And now that because we're using the power elastics, we're gonna get more tension in that lockout position. So I like to do four to six sets. You can do seven to 10 reps here on the standing single leg row. Hold that hip lock, squeeze in your abs and try and feel your abs when you get back on that alternating dumbbell bench. Okay, so the second pairing that I like to utilize, a little superset here, is again, we're looking to stimulate trunk control with our upper body. So we're gonna take a dumbbell floor bench and we're gonna get a little creative. We're gonna put a plate right here on our shins, okay? And I wanna see a little bit of dorsiflexion. Okay, and we're just gonna hold that plate right here while we're pressing. So we wanna squeeze in our trunk and try and really focus on holding and stabilizing it. And we wanna get those elbows all the way to the floor. So a lot of people will do a floor bench and they'll sort of do like half range. Try and get those elbows all the way to the floor and press. And you're gonna be doing this while you're squeezing in your abs, okay? So you wanna be squeezing through here, pushing that belly button down and over time, you can add a little bit more of a load. And I like to take this, superset this with pull-ups with the same exact concept, okay? What ends up happening is a lot of people say, why don't you put on a weight belt, put dumbbells around a belt? You can do that. 
But when you do pull-ups with a plate in your toes with that little dorsiflexion, your abs get smoked. And that's the key concept here when we're talking about sprint-based mechanics. Dynamic trunk control is key. So if we're swinging all over the place, that weight's going all over the place, we're gonna lose that dynamic trunk control. If we're holding that plate there and we're dorsiflexing our feet, and go here, okay? I wanna try and stop that swing. Come up, pause. One more here. That's tough. It's a really good exercise. Utilize both of these with the plate and the feet. I'd say four to six sets, same thing, four to six sets. The floor press, you can get a little bit higher reps. On the pull-ups, five to 10 reps is plenty to trigger that trunk and stimulate growth in the lats. Okay, so the last key pairings that I love to use for sprint-based mechanics, I love to use these two for any athlete that has to learn how to control their trunk, okay? And this is a really, really good finisher for upper body work. We're looking at push-ups that are walking. So something that we can do, you can get a little creative, you can do three push-ups, you can go one, two, three, walk forward. One, two, three, four, walk forward. One, two, three, four, five, and then walk forward five steps, okay? It's hard. You feel your gut, you feel your, your shoulder girdle, you feel nice and tight, nice and strong. Let's try and squeeze in that trunk, and we're gonna superset that with duff and row. So if I'm rowing with my left arm, I want my left knee on the bench right here, okay? And I want this back leg locked out. Think about maximal mechanics. I want this right underneath me, dorsiflex in the ankle, in the right ankle and the left ankle, lock out that right knee, row. This is tough. Really, really good for trunk control and being a little bit more dynamic, okay? I would say do three sets of those. I really do like using a little bit of a pyramid, either going up or coming down. Three sets of 12 on each side for the duff and row. Utilize all six of these movements. And what I would recommend is take one of these movements, go to the gym today, see how you feel when you're doing pull-ups with a plate in your feet. You're gonna notice that tomorrow, your abs are gonna be a little bit more sore. It's gonna help you recognize what that upper body can do when we're targeting stimulating dynamic trunk control with that upper body strength. We're gonna do a lot more unilateral work and it's gonna to lead to greater speed on the track and on the football field, soccer field, whatever it is that you're doing. So utilize these six exercises. If you need help with your sprint-based strength training, click on the link down below. Head over to garagestrength.com. If you want more content around speed-based training, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.